Today I'm going to show you guys how to knit my Open Trails sweater vest. Make sure you click the link in the video description and download the free PDF pattern. And what you're going to want to do is make sure you've got your supplies. Um, all sizes should be okay to knit this in two skeins of Lion Brand Respun Thick and Quick yarn. Um, I knit this in 9mm US 13 um, 32 inch or 40 inch circular needles and then I used 8 millimeter 16 inch needles to do all the ribbing. You can use the magic loop method if you know how to do that with longer needles if you don't have 16 inch um, 8 millimeter circular needles. Um, a few things to note. Um, if you want to see me wearing this and get a little pattern preview, feel free to click the link. I did a full quick video that just shows you what it looks like on, gives a little bit of background on like the sweater design and inspiration, how it's constructed. Um, one thing to note, one thing, the first thing you're going to want to do is knit a gauge swatch, which is a sample to make sure that your gauge is similar to mine. My gauge is 10 stitches um, and 13 rows and about four inches. The number of rows isn't as important because I just give you guidance on overall length instead of saying how many rows to knit. So um, make sure your gauge is similar to mine. I have this written in eight sizes. Pay attention to this. Vests can be difficult because people have are all different shapes and sizes. Um, so if you think you might need more armhole depth or collar depth um, or body length, you know, feel free to adjust that. These are just this is just um, giving you some information on the different um, sections of the sweater and what the overall length is. For reference, I am about like a 36 and a half, almost 37 inch bust. I knit a size three, okay? So you're gonna want to follow when you see um, eight, when you see the pattern and it references eight different numbers, if you knit a size three, you're gonna follow instructions for the third number in that row. So that's how you read a pattern. Um, I have my patterns in sizes like one through eight or one through six, and then you pick what size you wanna knit and you follow the number um, that's in the list of consecutive numbers. So if you're knitting a size six, you look at the sixth number listed out. Okay, that's just a little bit about how to read a pattern. Also, please note, there are chapters that I have highlighted and broken out for you. So if you need to just jump around and see different sections of the tutorial, feel free to click on the video chapters. It's a pretty long tutorial. I literally go through step by step um, everything that I do. Okay, so just um, enjoy. Feel free to comment with any questions or send me an email or message me through Instagram or my website. Instagram's a great way to communicate with me and see what I'm up to daily. So, all right, let's get started knitting the sweater vest. Okay, I am going to take my US 13 9 millimeter. 40 inch knitting needle and my yarn and I am going to make a tail long enough to cast on 104 stitches so you can 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, wrap the yarn around 10 times to get the approximate length for about 10 stitches and then I'm going to use this 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I'm going to cast on 104. This will be plenty of yarn to do my long tail cast on, so I am going to make a slip knot. I'm going to place the slip knot on my right hand needle. I am going to put my tail in front and I am going to cast on 104 stitches. You cast on however many stitches you need to cast on for your pattern size. And I will one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10. Okay, so that's 104 stitches. I'm gonna cast on one extra stitch 
because we're going to use that to join our work in the round. So what you're going to want to do is make sure all of your stitches are laying flat so we don't twist the work. You're going to make sure you have your stitch marker handy. And we're going to join the work in the round by pushing the beginning stitches towards the end here. Again, make sure your stitches are laying flat. And then you are going to slip. You're going to slip the last stitch on the left hand needle over to the right. And then you are going to move that last stitch that was on the right hand needle and you are going to drop that and pull. And that is how you join the work. Then place the stitch marker to denote the beginning of the round. And now you have joined in the round. Now you're going to do one by one rib. And so we are simply going to knit one purl one, knit one, purl one, all the way around. Okay, when you near the end of the first round, I just wanted to show you how to continue knitting. So when you knit in the round, all you do is you finish the last stitch in the round, and then you slip your stitch marker and then you simply continue knitting. So because we're doing the ribbing, we're gonna just knit the knit stitches and purl the purl stitches. So I will see you back here after I have finished um, the one by one rib for about three inches. Okay, I've completed the ribbing for about three inches or so. And now I am just gonna start stuck in that stitch stuck in that stitch in the round is just knitting every round so I'm gonna slip my stitch marker and I am gonna start knitting stuck in it and um, you know I'm designing this on the fly to be fully transparent with you guys and I'm still even though I've, I've got like an idea in my head about what I want this to look like not gonna lie, knitting a slipover or a vest like this is a little new to me. I've knit a lot of tanks, um, but to be honest, I don't wear a lot of vests or slipovers. This is something really new for me. So I'm um, kind of learning as I go here on the design. So bear with me. I'm gonna knit about six inches of stockinette and stop and take a look and see where I think it's going to fit me. I'm still deciding how deep I want my armholes to be. Like I'm struggling with, do I want to always have to wear a t-shirt underneath if I have really big armholes? Or maybe do I want to wear this without anything underneath? In which case I don't want the armholes or the v-neck to be like really deep. But anyway, so not 100% sure yet, but I'm going to check back with you once I've got about 6 inches of stockinette knit, which would be 9 inches total from the cast on. So I will see you back here in a little bit. Okay, I, I knit a little bit more than 6 inches. I knit so my total length of my body is about 10 inches. Okay, so just follow the directions for your pattern. So that this is, um, the ribbing was three inches and then the stocking that ended up being closer to seven inches. Okay, so now it is time to work the back. We're gonna work the back directly and you can decide if you wanna keep your stitches on your circular needle or if you want to take them off. So we're gonna work the first row of the back across half of our stitches and then you can decide if you want to take the other stitches off. I will probably take mine off just because it's a little bit easier if you are a beginner. So we've worked in the round now for a while for the body and now it's time to um, work back and forth because we're separating the front and the back. All right, so let's get going. So the first row of the back, 
we're going to knit one stitch and then we're going to do a decrease that leans to the left. In order to do that, we're going to do a slip, slip, knit. Okay, so we've got a decrease now that leans to the left. So we're going to knit across the rest of the back stitches until you get to three stitches before the end. So I had a hun uh, 104 stitches, so half of my stitches are 52. I've just knit three stitches, including the one stitch that was decreased. So I need to knit across um, to where I have three stitches left. So if if I subtract three from 52, that's 49, then another three, that's 46. So I need to knit across 46 stitches. I'm at 44, 45, 46, and then three stitches left should be the halfway point. We could have put a stitch marker there at the beginning, but it's always best just to check your stitches anyway. So when you get to the number you're supposed to get to, which is three stitches before the end of the back, you're gonna do a knit two together. So we get um, a right leaning slant, a right leaning decrease, knit one, okay? And now we can move um, these stitches to a piece of scrap yarn, but first, count and make sure you've got half of your stitches um, for the front here. 2, 4, 6, 40, 42, 44, 46, 40, 50, 52. So that's correct. So if you want now, you can grab um, a tapestry needle and a piece of waist yarn and I'll show you how to move these stitches to a piece of waist yarn so you can just knit back and forth for okay. the back. I've got my tapestry needle with a piece of scrap yarn that's a lot longer than the width of the sweater just so I have ample room. And so now we're gonna move these stitches that are representing the front onto this piece of waist yarn simply by taking the needle and sliding the stitches off onto the scrap yarn. Okay, so you're just gonna continue sliding the stitches off the scrap yarn, or off the needle onto the scrap yarn. All right, I'm just going to remove the stitches all the way up to that stitch marker because that's how I know that's the end of half of the stitches for the front. So then I'm just gonna pull this waist yarn through and kind of spread out the stitches, making sure that they're not gonna fall off the other end. And I'm just gonna pull that all the way out. Okay, I'm gonna remove the tapestry needle and just kind of leave this and basically, this just allows us to work a little more neatly back and forth for the back, okay? You can remove that stitch marker now because everything is on the needles that we need to work. So we've already done um, a decrease on the first row, okay? So now what we're going to do is work another decrease back. So I do decreases every row on this pattern. So we have to do a decrease on the back side of the work. So we need to purl in a way that we get the same decrease that leans the same way. So we are going to purl one stitch and then purl two together. Okay. And so now we've got a purl two together that leans the same way as the, as the stitch we reduced on the other side. So now we're gonna just purl three stitches before the end and we're gonna do another decrease, but we're gonna do that one a little differently. I'll show you. So purl three, two, you get to three stitches before the end. Okay, so I've purled to three stitches to the end. Now we're gonna purl two together through the back loop, and this is a little tricky, but this allows us to get the slant in the direction we need to. So to purl two together through the back loop, I kind of flip my work over like this, and we need to insert our needle so that it goes through this way, so we can purl through this, okay? Make sure you can see that again.
Okay, you're gonna insert the needle like as if to purl through those two stitches like this. And then you yarn over and purl through that way. Okay, so that's purling two together through the back loop and then you just purl that last stitch. And then when you turn the work over, you can see you've done two decreases now and they both slant the right direction. This one is going this way and this one is going this way. So basically we're working this way in and we're doing pretty sharp decreases because I'm doing them every single row. So you're going to repeat that again and I'll show you one more time so you can see we're going to knit one, slip slip knit, I'll show you again the slip slip knit because I feel like that got blurred out a little bit. Slip, slip knit. So you knit one, slip slip knit. Then you knit all the way to three stitches before the end. Okay, I've got um, three stitches now at the end. I am going to do a knit two together to get another decrease so my slant is all going in the same direction and then a knit one. And then we turn our work, our work, purl one, purl two together just normally, okay? And now we purl to three stitches before the end. Okay, so I am now at three stitches to the end. So now I'm going to do that purl two together through the back loop. A little tricky. You get the needle coming in up like this and then purl. And that gets you the stitch reduction in th at the angle we need. So I've done a total of four decreases on this side slanting this way. A total of four decreases slanting this way on this side. So follow your pattern and continue. It'll say how many um, more reductions you should do after you've done the first one and then it should give you a final stitch count that you should have um, so you know how many to do. So I will see you back here once I've completed the number of um, stitch reduction, the number of rows I need to do to get to the stitch count I need it to knit straight up the back. Okay, see you back in a little bit. Okay, so now I have completed the amount of decreases. I'm supposed to decrease to for my size. Um, so for my size, I was supposed to decrease for a total of 10 on each side. So that's 20 stitches. So if I started off with 52 stitches, um, I am down now to 32 stitches. So, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20, 22, 24, 26, 28, 30, 32 stitches. So that's correct. And now for the back, all we do is complete stockinette stitch, which is knitting on the right side, purling on the wrong side. We're just going to go straight up now. Since we've done all of our decreases, we're going to just continue straight until um, you get to the total length from top to bottom that you're supposed to get to. So I'm going to um, go around uh, 20 inches total from top to bottom. So um, you're just going to, all you're going to do is start knitting and purling back and forth. Okay, so you knit on the right side, purl on the wrong side. And um, then you can just take your tape measure and measure the work from the top of the um, where the needle is all the way down to the bottom of the ribbing. And that's how you're supposed to measure the length of the work. So I'm going to knit stockinette stitch here for a little bit and then I will check back in with you once it's time for me to bind off. And you're going to want to bind off on the right side. So finish a purl row and then um, be ready to bind off on the right side. Okay, I'll see you back here in a little bit. Okay, so I've completed stockinette, just knitting 
the um, knitting on the right side, purling on the wrong side with no decreases, just knitting straight um, so that my work is 20 inches from cast on to the needle here. And so you just continue to the length either you want to or the length that the pattern says, um, really up to you. Okay, so now I'm just going to show you how to bind off. I finished knitting um, on the wrong side, so I have the right side of, of my work facing me now. So now all we're going to do is knit two stitches, and then we're going to slip the first stitch over the second stitch there and drop that. So we just bound off one stitch. So you just continue knitting one stitch and slipping that stitch over. Knitting a stitch slipping that stitch over. So you just continue this, trying to bind off a little loosely. This is where we will seam the shoulders up, so we don't want it to be too tight. Um, just make sure you're kind of binding off consistently and um, it looks kind of even. Um, it can take a little bit to get the hang of this. There's lots of different ways to bind off. I like to bind off like this when I'm seaming. Um, this is just kind of a very straightforward way to bind off. Okay, so I'll see you back here when you've got one stitch left just to show you how to finish this off. Okay, so you knit the last stitch, you bind off, and then what you're going to want to do is leave a little bit of a tail to seam. Um, so I don't know, I'll leave about a foot or so and I'm going to snip that and then I'm going to gently pull the yarn through. Okay, so now we have bound off for the back and now it's time to take our work and put our front stitches back on our knitting needle. So you can take this and you are just going to place the stitches back on the needle here. Pick them back up. You can pull it out as you go, or you can pick them all, um, pick them all up like this, and then slide the, the waste yarn out at the end, whatever you like. So I'm just going to pick all these stitches up and work my way across, and then I'll show you how to take it out. Okay, I've put all these stitches back on the needle, and now I'm just going to slide that waste yarn back out. And um, we are going to join uh, our yarn on the right side of the work. So we want to make sure our stitches are ready to go on the right side. Okay, so what you're going to want to do to join the work is simply just start knitting. Um, so nothing fancy, you just take your end of your skein there and um, we're going to start knitting, but we're going to start doing our decreases on the front just as we did on the back. So I'm not going to show you again exactly how to do that. You can go back and rewatch what we did for the decreases on the back, but you're doing the same number of decreases. So I am doing 10 on one side, 10 on the other side. So um, I am going to decrease 20 stitches for my size. So you just simply start knitting and um, I'll just show you here what it looks like as you just join the yarn and you're gonna when you come back when you purl back you know you're gonna have to hold this yarn um, I'll show you when I purl back but go ahead and continue doing your decreases and I'll just show you what it looks like once I purl back I'm at the end of my first purl row decrease here I'm gonna do that purl two together um, through the back loop here and then um, I just wanted to show you this because um, this is where we've joined our yarn. So you just need to be careful once you get to that last stitch because it'll it'll um, come out. So you just kind of pull it back a little bit and then um, turn the work and continue knitting. But just you know you can kind of hold the end a little bit if you need to get it more taut and then as you continue knitting it um, it'll stay in place all right
Okay, so now I've finished the decreases on the front, the same amount that I did on the back. So I have 32 stitches left. I did 10 cre decreases on each side. So that's 20 stitches, 52 minus 20 is 32 stitches. And now I am going to knit stockinette just like I did previously for the back, but I'm gonna stop at 17 inches instead of 20 inches for the collar, okay? So we're gonna knit up till about here and then we're gonna shape the neckline for the collar. Okay, so I'll see you back here when you've knit um, to the length you need to knit before the collar. Okay, now I'm gonna start the neckline shaping. I continued till I hit 17 inches from the bottom of the work to the top of the work. I ended after a wrong side row, so I'm facing the right side. Now we're gonna shape the neckline. Okay, so we're gonna work across a certain number of stitches, reduce a stitch, knit one, remove the rest of these stitches, and then work back and forth shaping the neckline, the left part of the neckline going this way. So we are going to knit across. I wanna make sure um, my left front, just for this size, has 12 stitches, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12. But we're gonna go ahead and actually reduce on this first row. So I'm gonna knit across nine stitches here and then reduce. So we go like this. One, two. Okay, so I knit across nine stitches now I'm gonna reduce and I need to reduce so that my um, stitch goes this way. It leans to the right. So I'm going to knit two together, knit one. So I've got my decrease already going that direction. I'm gonna take my tapestry needle and remove these stitches just because I'm gonna be working back and forth and this just keeps the stitches um, out of the way. I'm just gonna leave those resting. I'm gonna take my yarn now and I am just gonna purl back. I'm not gonna reduce on the wrong side. I'm just gonna purl back. Okay, now I'm facing the right side of the work. Now I'm gonna reduce again three stitches before the end. Just before the end, I'm gonna do that knit two together knit one, and then purl back again. So now once I turn the work over, you can see that I've done two, um, two decreases there to shape the neckline. For my size, I'm going to do two additional decreases for a total of four. So I should have eight stitches left, two, four, six, eight, ten. So I've done two, I started with 12 stitches. I've reduced twice, so I have 10 stitches now. So I am gonna reduce again until I have 10 stitches, I'm sorry, eight stitches left. Okay, so I'll see you back here when I am done reducing and I have purled back and I'm on a right side row. Okay, so I have completed reducing stitches. I have eight stitches left. Okay, and now I need to just continue stuck a net till my piece um, measures 20 inches or until my front reaches my back. Um, for me, I'm gonna knit about four rows. This is just dependent on your gauge, but just make sure the front is about the same length as the back, and then I'll meet you back here on the right side to bind off. So I'm just gonna knit and purl for four additional rows to get me to the length that I need to. Okay, I've completed those rows, one, two, three, four, and now I'm just gonna bind off just as I did before on the right side. So then we will have finished the left front and then we're gonna rejoin the work at the neckline, bind off and then mirror what we just did, but um, this that'll just be for the right front. So I am just binding off like I did before and once I get to the last stitch, I'm going to trim it, leave a little bit of a tail, pull the last piece through. And now I am done with the left front. And now we're gonna pick up 
um, these stitches that are still rusting on our piece of waste yarn. I am going to pick them up here. Again, just put your needle through and pick these all up. Okay, I've got my stitches back on. I'm removing the piece of waste yarn here. Um, okay, so we are going to join at the lower left neckline here. We're going to join and actually bind off at the same time. I am binding off eight stitches for my neck here. So you just start knitting. I've got my tail here. Just going to start knitting and binding off. So you knit a stitch and I'm still kind of holding this piece of yarn here. So I'm going to knit the second stitch and then just start binding off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So you bind off as many stitches as your pattern size calls for. So I've bound off eight and I should have 12, um, 12 total, two, four, six, eight, 10, 11, 12. Don't forget to count the stitch that's already on your needle. Okay. So now what we're going to do is we're going to reduce again for the other neckline. So this is knitting one already over here. That's our first stitch. So now we're going to do a slip slip knit to decrease the other direction, okay? And now we just knit to the end. So that was one decrease. We're gonna mirror and do the same amount of decreases we did on the other side. Turn the work, purl back. Turn the work. Now we're going to reduce again at the beginning of the row. Knit one, slip, slip knit, knit to the end. Okay, so continue on decreasing as many decreases as you're supposed to work. And I'll see you back here at the end of my last decrease row. Okay, so I've done my four decreases, the same number of decreases that I did on the other side. Now I'm just gonna knit stack a net for the same length and bind off just as I did over here. Okay, so I've bound off for my right front. So now my left front and my right front are similar for the neckline. Um, and now we're gonna seam the back to the front. So take your tapestry needle and hopefully you have a long enough end on one side. Um, just note, I like to seam from the outside in. It just creates less room for error. So I've got a long enough tail on my back. If you don't have a long enough tail, it's okay. You can just seam it together using a brand new piece of yarn, not a problem. So weave your tapestry needle and um, you are going to line up the outside of the work, okay, and I'm just simply going to connect the ends. I usually just start by doing that. And then I go back and I find the right side up V on the top part. I'm going to try to zoom in here so you can see, get this in focus. Okay, I go through the right side up V here and the upside down V on the bottom. Okay, and you just continue that all the way across, paying attention to where you came out of. I came out of this V, so I'm gonna go in this V next, the right side up V. And then same thing, upside down V on the bottom. And you just work this all the way across. You shouldn't have a whole lot to seam up here. Um, but, there you go, sometimes it can be hard to see. So just continue all the way across, going through the right side up V and the upside down V's on the bottom. Okay. 
and it'll end up starting to look like it's not seamed, like it's one continuous piece when you alternate the V's you're going through. So you don't want to go up through the right side V's on both sides or else it won't line up correctly. All right, and then as you get towards the end here, and, and don't worry, we're gonna seam up all of these ends later on. Um, I am just going to connect through the last one there, and um, I'm going to just take my tapestry needle off and now we've got this side seamed up okay so you just repeat that and do the same thing for the other side start on the end and work your way across okay so here's what it looks like once you seam up both shoulders here so we've got our neckline um, and now we are ready to pick up stitches for the collar and for the border around our um, underarms all right. Okay, now it's time to pick up stitches and work the collar ribbing. Just to note, I am I'm going down a needle size. I'm using US 11 8 millimeter 16 inch circular needles. Make sure you've got a stitch marker handy too to join in the round. So we're going to be knitting this in the round. So you'll definitely need 16 inch needles for the collar. When you knit in the round, um, the needle length has to be small enough for you to knit comfortably in the round. Um, if you don't have eight millimeters, that's fine. You can still do nine millimeters. A lot of times people do their ribbing a little looser, so they like to go down a needle size. If you are um, a tight one by one ribber, you will be fine in nine millimeter needles. We, we did nine millimeter needles for the bottom here. I like a little bit looser bottom, so it's not so tight. Okay. So you're gonna to wanna to find halfway, about halfway through the back here. And I'm gonna to try to zoom in a little bit so you can see. And you're going to want to insert your needle halfway through that top V. And this is a little tricky to get this going here. You're gonna take your yarn and leave a little bit of a tail. You're gonna probably wanna to try to hold it with your other hand here and you're gonna bring the yarn up and over and try to pull this through. It can be a little tricky to get this started. You probably wanna pull it pretty tight so it slides through. There we go. So I've got, make sure you've got a tail here going. Now we're gonna pick up for one stitch for every stitch along the back. We're gonna keep picking up and knitting. When we knit, pick up and knit the same direction as the work, we're picking up one stitch for every stitch. But then once we get to the end here and we're working down the neckline, we are going to skip a few stitches. I'll show you what I mean. So keep continuing to work all the way across. And I'm getting to the end here. And this is where it's seamed, so it's a little tricky. You might need to pull the work here. Okay, so now I am going to be picking up three stitches for every four rows after that first stitch, so in here. So we're, it's similar to how we picked up. We just need to pick up three stitches for every four rows so it allows enough spacing so that the stitches lay a little correct, lay correctly. Okay, so I'm gonna pick up one stitch here, one, two, skip a stitch here, three. That's three stitches for every four rows. One, two, skip a stitch, three. And I'm just going in underneath that first stitch, okay? And then once we get to the bottom, we um, still go in one stitch for every stitch. One, two, skip a row, three. Now I'm pretty much at the baseline here. I'm gonna go in one more stitch, maybe two here. Go in right here. 
because I, I want to make sure I don't have a lot of holes in my work, but you do have an extra strand here. So you will be able to kind of weave this back in and close up any gaps. Okay, so now we're gonna pick up stitches in the bottom of the neckline here. One stitch for every stitch. Okay, so I've turned my work here. Now I'm gonna continue on the same way. You know what, I've got a little hole here. I'm gonna skip that stitch and go here. Okay, so now I am going to work three stitches for every four rows again. One, two, skip a stitch, three. One, two, skip a stitch, three. One, two, and then now I'm actually back at the back. And this is a little thick here because this is where I've seamed, so you gotta be careful. Okay, now I'm to the back and we're just gonna pick up a stitch for every stitch along that last half of the back here. And then once we get to the point where we started, we're gonna join the work in the round and begin knitting. Okay. So I'm going to pick up my last stitch here and I'm going to put my stitch marker on and now I'm going to start my one by one rib. Knit one, purl one. And before you go too far, make sure you've, got an, you've picked up an even number of stitches. I already checked without looking, but make sure you pick up an even number of stitches so you end on a purl and start with a knit, okay? So you're just gonna continue, knit one, purl one, all the way around. Okay, so I'm nearing the end of the first round of the one by one rib for the collar. Now I'm just going to slip that stitch marker and I'm gonna continue knitting the one by one rib in the round. Okay, so I'll see you back here when I bind off. Um, and just follow the directions for the length of the ribbing or continue on for the length of the ribbing that you would like. And then I'll see you back here for bind off. Okay, so I have gotten to the point where I am ready to bind off. And um, to bind off in rib, you just continue knitting in pattern. So I've knit the first two stitches, knit one, purl one, and then you just lift the stitch over. And you continue doing that, knitting in pattern, but you've gotta make sure you go loose enough so you can get your head through the, um, get your head through the slip over. So just continue working all the way around, binding off loosely in the one by one rib pattern. And I'll see you back here at the end of that. And just show you how to finish everything off. Okay, when you get to the end here, um, you just bind off as you normally do. And then what we'll do is when we, when we snip the tail, when we snip the tail, um, we'll go back in later and weave in the ends and just kind of make the collar look um, a little bit better. Okay, so we'll go back in the end. You know what, let's just do it now, why not? Okay, so thread your tapestry needle. It always takes me forever to do this when I'm filming, of course. Can never get it in on the first 
try. Okay, so I usually, what I usually do is go through the last V here and then go back in here, that V. And that seams up the work. And then you'll just go back in and weave in the ends here. Snip the end, pull it back through a little bit, and there you go. Okay, so we have finished the collar. We've finished the collar, and now you're gonna complete and pick up stitches just as you did um, for the collar. Um, I am gonna use 24 inch eight millimeter needles and the whole thing is worked perpendicularly. So we're gonna work, pick up and knit three stitches for every four rows again. One, two, skip a row, three. One, two, skip a row, three. Join in the round and do one by one rib for the same length that you did the collar or however long you would like your armhole ribbing to be. Okay, I lied. I um, used my 16 inch needles for my armhole ribbing because I couldn't find my 24 inch but I kind of crammed them on there and it's fine but I wanted to show you so again I picked up three stitches for every four rows all around the armhole I started at the bottom of the armhole worked my way around but I wanted to show you how to join in the round here this one because we're not picking up stitches on a finished edge you will really need to kind of join it in around in the round nicely and this is this is just how I do it Okay, so I move that first stitch over to the right hand needle, left first stitch on the left hand needle over to the right hand needle, and then I just kind of lift that last stitch over the stitch I just knit. I do not drop it. I do not drop it. I twist it, and I um, then place the stitch marker, and then now I work the stitch. Knit one one and that just helps to tighten up the area um, again we'll be weaving this all in but it just creates a little bit neater of a seam there okay so continue knit one purl one and then bind off loosely again okay and again if you want to try to find this will be tight like the neckline will be tight um, it's supposed to fit right up to the neck you will have to bind off very loosely or research you know the italian bind off the stretchy bind off there's different ways you can bind off so that the neck won't be so tight i mean i bound off i can get this over my head fine but if you're having problems you can bind off even more loosely or find an alternative way to bind off that's a little stretchier okay so i'll see you back here once i've completed both of my armhole ribbings okay okay i've got my first armhole ribbing complete i just wanted to show you what it's looking like few reminders again when you pick up stitches make sure you pick up an even number of stitches and um, again make sure you bind off pretty loosely if you want to find another bind off method that's fine I did use 16 inch needles because uh, I couldn't find my 24 inch but I honestly I think 16 inch was fine for this armhole depth and um, if you wanted to use um, the magic loop method for the collar and the armhole ribbing feel free to do that if you don't have shorter circular needles you can just find a video on um, the how to complete the magic loop method if you don't know how to do that um, so I am going to complete the other armhole and I did not provide stitches stitch count because everybody picks up stitches a little differently. If you are picking up three stitches for every four rows consistently, um, you know, you should be fine. I would just make sure your stitch count matches on both sides of the armholes, okay? So I'll see you back here after I finish this side. Okay, so I've got my ribbing complete everywhere. Now it's time to just weave in the ends, and I know I showed you how to do the collar, but um, basically you're just gonna wanna take your tapestry needle and take the ends like along the ribbing and weave them back through up into the work. And then you can just trim it, kind of pull it back. 
and trim the end here. And then the pieces that are um, close to seams, you know, I just like to weave my ends back into the seams because you won't really see that on the front. So like this one, I'm just going to kind of weave back through here and pull that through and then just snip the tail. Make sure you kind of stretch it out a little bit. I'm going to snip the tail there. Um, and you know, just keep doing that with all of the other, um, ends like this one, I'll probably weave back through here. Um, and there you go. And it, um, once you're done weaving everything, all the ends, you can steam block. If you're using this yarn, this is an acrylic yarn. I like to steam block acrylic yarn. So go ahead and click the video link I've got above in the description to learn how I steam block my garments and then you can wear it. I hope you enjoy it. This is a fun knit and um, I'll see you guys in the next video.